ist uns gelungen, das Gottesteilchen und die aus ihm resultierende Masse zu stabilisieren. Im stabilen Zustand entsteht dabei eine Art Portal, welches möglicherweise das Reisen durch die Zeit erlaubt. Was that Claudia? It's been a couple of weeks since I watched Dark and yeah, it's gotta be. And Jonas is trying to continue where, continuing where she left off, or trying to replicate what what she was able to do. Oh. Oh. It stabilized. That's for sure. Nope. to the opening yeah I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned this in a comment section or, or in a in a in a comment that I posted but yeah um, something that I didn't really mention that much in the previous video in the previous episode was the fact that the recording that Jonas was listening to in regards to like Claudia was actually 19 was was actually the 80s claudia right she was the one discussing the the events that is happening we also need to know like what happened to jonas in between these timelines that managed to uh to uh What happened to his back is what I'm trying to say. The scars in the back. And look at this. The parallels. Yep, it's oh man, it's Jonas's room as well. I mean of course it would be. Na du Schlafmütze. So ein bisschen spät dran heute. This is just like episode one. <laughs> Holy shit! Die Vergangenheit ist die Vergangenheit. Hmm. Jetzt ist jetzt. But my past is the future. I love it. I I love how I'm, I mean I don't really need to explain it anymore. Like you watch me react to Dark this far, you know how I feel about how the show uses time and the dialogue and everything. It's, it's great. Die französische Delegation kommt diese Woche ins AKW. Ich schaff's einfach nicht. Egal. Kein Problem. Ich habe ja nichts anderes zu tun. The show just rickrolled me. <laughs> it's, it's not supposed to be funny, but. Hmm. Quatsch. Claudia knows. <laughs> but of course, of course she would. Schon okay. <sighs> he definitely wanted to talk about like. The cave and whatever. Back to the photo. Yeah. Wenn sie es nicht außergewöhnlich? Hmm. Was? Was Alexander Tiedemann den Nachnamen seiner Frau angenommen hat. Hmm. Now, okay, okay, we're we're finally getting into that. He's a curious fellow, but but dangerous at the same time. There's something, I don't know, there's something sinister about him. And he's looking at that specifically. Of course, I cannot actually, you know, I'm preemptively judging him based on some of his actions and what he's doing. But at the same time, it's like... <sighs> ah, here we go, here we go. Ich verkaufe nicht meine Titten oder meinen Arsch. Ich verkaufe Rezepte für eine scheiß Hormontherapie, du Idiot. 
Weißt du, das Problem sind nicht die Geheimnisse. Das Problem ist der Scheiß, den jeder in jeden hineinprojiziert. Hm, mm, there we go. Just as I was preemptively judging that, that police officer. Wow, look at this. Like father, like son. Shoving the box away. Showing the time machine. Ich habe alles falsch gemacht. Hm. Mm. Ich habe versucht, ein Geheimnis zu bewahren. Mhm. Mm Aber in Wahrheit ist es genau das, was uns kaputt macht. The truth is that. Ah. Uh, seek the secrets. Yeah. Deswegen will ich, dass du selber siehst. Mit oh. Papas Geheimnis. Great cut. I do love that the recurring theme of like lies and secrets and how it destroys all of us is still being like hammered in. Like we see the. <laughs> That's wow. Literally his his mother and he can't really say anything about it hmm loneliness just like Jonas deep got mm. but as I was saying before like in season one we establish all of these lies and, and how much it impacts our characters and now we're seeing the consequences What the fuck? <laughs> yo, yo. Um, this. Tut mir so leid. Und sie sieht aus wie der Hund, den ich hatte, als ich ein Kind war. Gretchen. <laughs> Woher wissen Sie das? Weil es mein Hund ist. I just noticed her eyes. Huh. Oh yeah! I never noticed her eyes! Heterochromia. Huh. Interesting. Two sides. Usually the symbolism, right? There's like two two sides of your of yourself interesting oh wow you can see like how relaxed future claudia is compared to past claudia from the way they're sitting alone great stuff zwei leute sitzen an ihren tischen hermann und kowalczyk gleich wird unsere sekretärin zum rechten tisch gehen auf dem weg wird sie sich luft zu wedeln <laughs> <laughs> The paradox, like she's remembering exactly what is happening right now because she's looking at it. <laughs> I love the joke. You're experiencing it right now, yeah? Ich bin du. Und mir wurde von mir gesagt, dass wir eine und dieselbe Person sind. This is a dangerous game you're playing, Jonas. I guess the beauty of the show isn't... I mean, for one, it's like... Most of these characters have plot armor because we know that they're gonna be alive, or at least there's a future version of them, right? But it's not about that, it's about like... How they became those future selves. And how they change. Letztes Jahr kam ein Fremder ins Hotel. Das sind seine Sachen. She's gonna see all of those symbols and those markings. Oh. <laughs> he purposefully left those. His theme playing again in the back. Wollte er, dass ich ein Paket für ihn aufgebe? An wen? Jonas. Jonas Kahn. Yeah. <laughs> Warum haben Sie das nie erzählt? 
Why? Yeah, why? Why indeed? That was from the book, wasn't it? The book that Elizabeth... Or the book that, uh, that had the photograph of Adam and, and, and the rest. I think. I could be wrong. These are friends. Please are like in our house. Does he know so? Oh, oh. I was about to comment that he kind of represents lawful evil, as in, yeah, he's pressing on questions that may fracture or ruin, you know, these people, these relationships that have been built on, but he's doing it in, in you know, He's doing it as a lawful person, right? As, as, as justice, as, you know, someone who's just doing his job. But, but now it's like, oh, uh, does he know y the stranger? Is he like sent by Adam? Like, like, I don't know. I can't trust anybody. That's the problem. What are we doing here? She's not actually gonna meet. Like, like, what? Wouldn't that? I mean, I don't know the implications. I mean, I got. Mm. That is cool. Müsstest du nicht in der Schule sein? Fucking. <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here and why are you eating an apple? Fucking Adam's apple. <laughs> it's the fruit of knowledge. Im Krankenhaus. Boxing. On that knife just a bit there. Und dass er für jeden Menschen einen Plan hat. Aber was ist, wenn Gott keine Ahnung hat, was er tut? Wenn der Plan falsch ist und Gott sich irrt. Gott irrt sich nicht. Er kann die Vergangenheit ändern und die Zukunft. Wer hat es gesagt? Der Mann mit dem Stein. Aber das ist 30 Jahre her. Was hat das mit Mats zu tun? Aber niemand kann das ändern. Niemand. Nicht einmal der weiße Teufel. What the f I mean, he does retain memories. He just can't remember all of it, though. That's... And he keeps repeating that again and again and again until he comes old. If only Egon know. We still have no idea what happened to Ulrich though. Like his faith. Whether if he's still alive or not. Du musst Adam stoppen. Wer ist Adam? That's that's the question. I have my theories. Yeah, I feel like Somebody would already be there. Elizabeth? Cut to... Oh, we're not gonna cut to young Elizabeth. Unless young Elizabeth is in the car? Nope, we're cutting to Charlotte. Oh, the... The page that, that she saw was a page from from Tan House's book. And that specific book, not not the book that that had the uh, the photograph. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Mm. Hold up. Hold up. We went from Elizabeth, we cut to... We got to her mother, Charlotte, and then she... Why 
lügst du sie an? Warum sagst du nicht, dass wirklich in der Todeszone ist? I'll talk about Elizabeth and Charlotte um, during the discussion. Cut them loose. Come on, Elizabeth. Yeah. Ich wollte wissen, was aus dem geworden ist. I also want to know what became of him. Thank you very much. Was ist immer noch hier? Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. This is nuts, this is nuts, this is nuts. Old Egon is meeting old Ulrich, this is nuts, this is nuts. My name is Egon Tiedemann. I have seen you for 30 Egon Tiedemann. Wie könnte ich dich jemals vergessen? Ja. Yeah. Could never forget him. My only aim is to take many lives. The more, the better I feel. Still quoting that. Ich kenne das. <laughs> He would know now. No, wait, wait, no, no, he, he would not know about it, actually, at this point. Glaubst du an Gott? I mean, she's wearing the necklace. Ich glaube zum Beispiel, dass Gott dafür gesorgt hat, dass du zu mir kommst. Und dass sein Plan für mich ist, dich da zu sein. Yeah. Oh my god, I have I didn't even comment on it. That's how he got the uh, the scar on on his neck. Because we saw that in 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 Future Jonas when he was meeting Hana. Should have made that connection when when he was when he was being uh hang. Whoa, 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 I don't even know who you are. Yeah, bist du wirklich? So Elizabeth is keeping secrets. Was wirklich in der Todeszone ist. So all of them don't know who he is. Apart from, again, probably Elizabeth. Cool. Everybody's holding the light. Searching for answers. I love that futuristic flashlight, by the way. Like, it's so cool. It's so simple. Straight to the... Oh, wow. Just an observer. I love the way they're cutting this. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the time machine that she's gonna use. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, I I missed this show. Like it's been two weeks. I took well three weeks. I took a break from watching the show for a for a while, but just jumping back into this again, it's it's great. Okay, it's stabilizing again. We still have no idea what it could do though. So you better tread carefully. Whoa. 
Maybe we're gonna take the... Okay. Clausen, Investigator Clausen. That's the name. You know what? I'm gonna say what I wanted to say about Charlotte right now because I'm pretty sure half of you are not gonna be watching the discussion so you have no idea what I am thinking about. So, Charlotte, um, is it possible or is it crazy for me to say if Charlotte's mother, whose identity remains a mystery, is actually Elizabeth, her her daughter. <laughs> so the reason why I'm thinking about it is, well, one, it's a it's a fantastic play on the on what came first, the chicken or the egg. But there's that thing that has always been in the back of my mind that has always confused me, and that is how the f does no one know about Charlotte. Noah kept saying that from an old friend. Charlotte has no idea who Noah is. Well, what if they are friends in the future? And it is actually when... No, actually, that would not make sense, actually. Wait a minute. No. Hmm. In order for this theory to work, Elizabeth needs to go back in time. Because Charlotte could not be born in the future. Unless she was, and then Charlotte gets sent back in time. Either way, the fact that her mother is kept as a mystery and now we're focusing on it, now we are um, putting that as a, as a main plot line, a, a main plot element, a, a something that is meant to be thought and something that we need to question more now. Yeah. Again, it's a very long stretch. That's it's it's a very um it's a theory that has no foundations at the moment. It's just just a random thought that I had. But anyways, great great episode. Wow, we are we are back with Dark. Again, like I said, it's been a couple of weeks since I've actually seen the first episode of season two of Dark. I took a bit of a break, so jumping back into Dark once again and just revisiting and, and just reliving all of this once again and just wow. It's yeah, it's great. It's it's good to be back. It's it's good to be back. Um immediately the show just just it just Hits me with all of these like crazy new revelations, new details, new questions to be had, and some answers that I had before, right? Some of the things with like Ulrich, for example, like that, that that's something that I've been wanting to know for a long time, and now they showed it, and, and everything else. Really, really good. It's, re it's really good. Um, yeah, great episode. <laughs> um... I mean, let's just immediately jump to, like, some of the scene-to-scene -scene discussion, right? I, I don't really need to talk more about, like, the episode as a whole. It's a great episode. Um, cinematography has always has always been great. Music has, has always been great as well. Um, the song choices as well. Rick rolled me in the beginning there. Great job, show. Um, but, you know, it's appropriate for the time, right? At the time, they don't really know what, what a Rick roll is. It's just, you know, it's just Rick Astley. And, and it's it's a really good song. I enjoy, I, I like that song, okay? Um, so I don't really feel offended at all. Why, why would I? Um, and the acting as well. Some of the casting is really great. I talked about, like, Ulrich um, about a couple of seconds ago. Um, the actor that portrayed... Older Ulrich is, mwah, that is great casting. For a second, I thought that was just, you know, them using prosthetics, right? Like, they, like I was like, whoa, that's just, like, really, really good, like, makeup. But, but then again, I'm like, wait a minute, this show has never really done makeup for, you know, actors in different periods. It's always a different actor for different periods. That's always been the case. So... 
props to them. This has probably Ulrich Ulrich has been like my favorite um casting for this moment right here. Like old Ulrich and and I guess middle aged Ulrich just they just look so similar to the point that I thought that there was actually just makeup. So great on that front. And yeah, everything has been great. So um, immediately jumping to like the first scene of this episode is of course Jonas trying to figure out um, how to uh, contain or I guess tame, not contain, but tame the uh, this thing. <laughs> This, this dark matter, if you will, right? Um, and I do love the fact that we are using Claudia's tapes and her step-by-step, -step, I guess, um, explanation of this thing and how they are able to, um, or, at, or, or at least what they did in the past, and then Jonas is using that information for the future, and it just ties well into the theme of the show that everything is connected. The, the chicken and the egg... Um, analogy that that theme has just been exploding in this entire season. It's actually insane. You know how when they first talk about it, I was like, oh yeah, it's only going to be for that like one specific thing, right? But nope. At this point, I feel like everything is a chicken and the egg. <laughs> like like everything. This, this this everything from the cast, the story, all of the subplots, all of the main plots, all of the characters and the side characters. It's like everybody's connected and everybody's like what actually came first it's it's honestly insane and i think this show has done a splendid job at doing that um and we're going to talk more about that once we um reached some of those other scenes as well but yeah i do love this specific aspect i love that jonas is using claudia's tapes interesting enough it is actually claudia that is actually young claudia not older claudia that is doing it so obviously young claudia is going to witness this event as well i mean we are five days ahead well i guess four days now once since this video i'm sorry um since this episode is over so we are getting really close to the apocalypse and um we have no idea what that is going to be we have no idea what that has in store we have no idea what adam is planning for the apocalypse but all we do know that it is called the apocalypse and can be good so i do love this aspect of the story as well really good really good stuff really good stuff continuing from that scene we jump into like uh to uh to mickel right here in the 1980s and man just the parallels between mickel and Jonas. he's sleeping in the same room as Jonas. i got well i guess this is mikhail's room now that i'm thinking about it um but everything just plays out just like episode one, like from you, from Jonas Mikkel make, waking up to going downstairs. Well, I guess the the difference between this moment and in episode one is that Hannah was, well, let's just say she was pleasuring. Um, she was she was having pleasure with with Mikkel's father. Yeah, <laughs> um, crazy family to say the least. Um, interesting. I haven't noticed that yet. Apples, apples, apples. Hmm. It's an it's a occurring fruit. I mean, we know why. I mean, if we're talking about like thematically speaking, it is the fruit of knowledge, right? Even though it's not technically an apple, it's like. It's the forbidden fruit. It's not really an apple, but most people would just... It's symbolically associated with an apple. It's like... Yeah. Um, it's not really an apple. The fruit of knowledge. But for the purposes of simplifying things, it is an apple. And it is interesting to see that for once we see the apple in Adam's like whole room back in like episode 1 of season 2. We're seeing this again here. Um... Hana is sorry, not Hana. Um, Ines is packing it to um to Mikkel's um bag, and then we see it again um when Mikkel meets Jonas, like halfway through the episode, and Jonas is eating it. It is interesting to say the least. I guess it's the ever looming presence of knowledge can be. Um. A blessing and a curse, because that's a, a theme of this episode as well. It's a theme of the show, but it's been a really 
um, occurring theme in this episode specifically, and that is about the truths and the consequences of knowing those truths, right? For a lot of us, we do want to know, like, the answers. We, we want to know the truths. We want to know what is the secret behind all of this, all of these questions that we had, right? All of these mysteries. It's been tearing us apart. We, we want to know. It's driving us nuts. But then once you do know about the truth, once you do know about the secrets, is it actually what you want, though? Right? A lot of, a lot of these characters are asking questions, right? And they never really question on whether or not the answer is great for them. Now, speaking of secrets and trying to find them, Charlotte is doing God's work here. <laughs> like, she has been on this case 24-7, continuing where Ulrich left off, obviously, because at first she thought that Ulrich was also a crazy person, just like everybody else, but now she doesn't. It's right there, right? All of these crazy things, and looking at Noah, which I will talk about soon, there's this, like, relationship between Noah and, and Charlotte that has been talked about since season one that I feel like I should be talking more about it, especially here, but we'll get to that. So, Charlotte, searching about Sigmund Buscaratus S, literally looking at a Wikipedia page right th right here. <laughs> like, like, this is the Wikipedia page for uh, the, uh, the Emerald tablet, right, that contains the, the inscriptions that says Sigmund Buscaratus S. But as she is searching for all of these things, a character appears. This character appears in the previous episode, and he is more prominent in this episode, and that is Inspector Clausen. This dude. This dude right here. He is very suspicious. I mentioned in the reaction that he feels more like a lawful evil character, as in he is about the law, but he brings... Um, it's like a necessary thing for him to do, right? Like, he is just, I guess at this point, a normal cop, a normal officer who wants to figure out these secrets, but obviously the characters in the show, the characters that we do know, that, have, we, that we have been um, associated with for these past couple of episodes, they kind of don't want Clausen to know about all of this, especially Charlotte. Charlotte's like, no, 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 I, I got this, I got this, don't, don't, don't poke your finger on, on, on all of these things. These are, this is my jurisdiction, right? You, I don't want you to know about all of these things because I don't really trust you and I don't trust him as well, right? And there's this obvious question, there's this obvious relation that well, it's not, it's not really obvious, but it's more like my current suspicions, and that is, is he related to Adam and, and that whole organization, Sigmundus Kratus S, because it feels like it. And again, it, it may just be a red herring just to throw me off, but the fact that he was with Charlotte and when they were discussing things with Claudia, sorry, not Claudia, um, Regina. He is very suspicious, not just about like Alexander, but especially about the stranger, right? He's asking those questions. He is pressing for it. What is his, like, like, it's not what his name, it's more like what does he look like, right? The appearance, because they don't know his name, right? But they probably know what he looks like. And the fact that he is talking about it, the fact that he is questioning it to to uh, Regina, it does make me believe that he is probably somebody who is associated with Sigmundus Creatus S. And not only that, but of course in the beginning, in the... Uh, in the episode, especially during this moment, right, as they are leaving, he is looking at that, right? He is looking at that photograph. So I am curious because this photograph, this Noah is the one that is absolutely visible in this in this frame, right? There's, there's also this old dude, but we don't know who this old dude is for now, but we do know who this one is. That's Noah, right? And he, uh, and, and Noah being the prominent character that he is, 
I'm sure a lot of people have recognized his face, right? Even characters that we, that may probably have no idea who he is, but you have probably seen him. You know what I mean? So the fact that he is looking at it and has this weird expression on him, it's like, hmm, it's, it's almost as if that he is keeping things in check. You know what I mean? Like, again, it's just assumptions, just me being very suspicious about this character. We have no idea who, who you are. You just appeared by season two when during the most important week of the story thus far right we are in the week that is approaching the apocalypse we are five days away from the end of the world from the moment that adam has been waiting for and it feels like it's like it's kind of like okay I'm, I'm gonna send all of my goonies and all of my minions to just make sure everything is it is you know going exactly as it is and nobody's stopping us and nobody's like ruining this moment because we have to keep everything in check and everything needs to be exactly as it is foretold so it does feel that way mm. i mean the same the same can be said to to noah at when when he was meeting with um, with Mikkel in this episode, right? Mikkel was about to approach the cave, and given the fact that the timelines are moving consecutively at the same time, Jonas and ya and Hana was traveling through time, and they were they are in the cave, and they are about to appear out of the cave, right? So I would assume that Hana and Jonas are in that cave during that exact moment when Mikkel is about to enter the cave, but they are just you know just a couple of hundreds of meters across. Just trying to navigate through the maze and stuff. And then Noah comes in and go, hey, 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 hey. You're not supposed to meet them. You're not supposed to meet them. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stop you right there, son. Turn around. Don't don't go into the cave. You will be lost. And of course, Mikkel obeys. He goes back. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm just gonna say that that's probably a good thing because obviously they can't really meet. So it is that that um, that duty of these time travelers, right? The Sigmundus Creatus S of making sure that everything stays in place, everything does not stray, everything doesn't cause a fracture in space-time continuum, and I feel like Noah is doing exactly that during that moment. I don't feel that there's any other nefarious reasons why Noah is there, except for just preventing Mikkel from meeting with um, Hannah and and Jonas. But it does beg the question of like, how does no one know that Mikkel is there? But then again, he is a time travel traveler, and he's working with Adam, so if anything, Adam knows all. And this would make more sense, though. Remember, so, so the theory that I had before, right, in, in the previous episode when we were introduced to Adam, is like, Adam is Jonas. That was, that was my theory going in, right? Adam is Jonas because of the obvious, oh, oh, the protagonist who became the antagonist trope and, and all that stuff. But it would make more sense, though, now thinking about it, that Adam, who is Jonas, with an asterisk because it's still a theory, but Adam being Jonas knows that Yo that his past self, the stranger Jonas, is going to go back in time and and wants to meet Mikkel, or at least he's going to get out, he's going to appear out of the cave exactly when... Hmm... Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, how... No, no, that, no, that, that, that makes no sense. What I was about to say was that Adam knows that Jonas is going to went out of the cave. No, 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 it, it still makes sense <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, it, it would still technically make sense. Adam, who is Jonas, asterisk, um, knows that his past self is going to appear in the, in the past, in the 1980s, during this specific time. So he tells Noah, and I guess anybody else in his like circle to, to to say like hey can you go back in time during this exact specific moment that i am going to to come out just make sure that nobody's there just to you know make sure that nobody important is around the vicinity so can you please if there are those people just just move them aside like like that can be a possibility now that i'm thinking about it so yeah it tracks 
I'm I'm still keeping with that theory, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, Clausen, Noah, well Noah especially, but Clausen still in the air could be a member of the society, could just be an average cop just doing his job. We don't know for sure just yet, but it does feel suspicious that he is very, very peculiar about these characters and these persons of interest but of course one of my favorite moments in this episode is um <laughs> claudia meeting claudia it's it's great i love it i love it it's great i mean the only other character in this show that has met a, a different version of themselves were Jonas and well there's four characters actually now that I'm thinking about it there's Jonas there's um Helge there's Noah and now there's Claudia four characters who knows about time traveling and who wants to change the future they all have their different goals and 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 you know their own different um reasonings but they all want the same thing right they they want to change the future they want to create a different future for themselves right some of their goals may align right Jonas and Claudia and then, of course, there's Helge, which at this point, we have no idea what Helge really wants. But obviously, he wants to stop Noah, and Noah wants to stop Jonas. Seemingly, right? I say seemingly because of the theory that Jonas is actually Adam, which, which again, like... Could Noah... And no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Could Noah actually be a protagonist by the end of this? Like, could could we have a situation where the roles are reversed and Jonas becomes the antagonist and then Noah is going to be the protagonist or at least a character that will stop Jonas and has good reasons to stop Jonas and we're actually going to cheer for him could possibly be the case I mean at this point anything goes right and it's only a matter of like execution and how they set it up but no, I'm kind of, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. Again, just a theory, just something that um, is a possibility, but it doesn't mean that that can actually be the case. And it would require a lot of, you know, um, incredible writing and character development for me to agree with that and, and go like, hell yeah, do what you do, Noah. You know what I mean? Like, there has, there has to be like a twist in, in, in there somewhere for me to root for him because right now, He's a good villain, he's a good antagonist, but obviously there's more to him, right? We just don't know it yet, and that part, that mystery is what is making it enticing. Like, we do have no idea how evil he is or how good he is. We don't know. We don't know. And that's the beauty of Dark. Um, but, bit of a tangent there, but going back to this. Claudia meeting Claudia. I love this dynamic. I love this interaction really, really well. I love especially when... Future Claudia is telling past Claudia the events. I love that future Claudia is telling past Claudia like the events of what is about to happen because future Claudia is remembering this exact moment when past Claudia is looking at all of these things. Like it's it's so good. It's so great to see like the like just the just trying to wrap your head around it is 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 brilliant to to look at like honestly it's 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 a mind fuck and i and I love it um but yeah, Claudia of course initially has no idea what the fuck is going on past Claudia, I mean, but as things move on as time progresses he she realizes like what the the gravity of the situation culminating at the end of the episode when she's digging 
the time machine that future Claudia put, which I am assuming she put there in the past, which means that same time machine, there's like multiple different versions of that exact same time machine. There's only one time machine, but it exists in multiple different timelines. And yeah, <laughs> even trying to explain it is, is hard for me, but you get what I'm talking about, hopefully. Um, but moving on from that, um, we got a bit more of future Jonas, or no, not future Jonas, past Jonas in the future, just trying to get this fuel to, to, uh, to help him regain this, to, to help him regain the, the ability to tame or to use the dark matter, whatever particle, Really sweet to see like the contrast between like the, the bleak future and the more serene past. Really is. This cut was hard because we start from like the good old days, right? The good old days of, of Claudia, sorry, um, Regina and Alexander just having their lovely relationship and then just cut it to to this it it it, def it obviously it it pains to see her be this way and if anything this actually gives more meaning to why claudia is doing what she is doing right because we got that comment from her that maybe regina can be saved right so we're getting more and more about like the reasonings why these characters want to change the future right they all want to change it but obviously they have different um different reasonings why they want to change it and it's all tied to emotional connections but skipping just a bit because we already talked about like the stuff with um noah and mikkel because that's the next scene um this part is peculiar when egon is talking with helge who obviously now has the dementia he still retains some memories, but very vaguely, so it's really hard for them to make sense of all of it. But he dropped this bombshell, the White Devil. What the fuck is that? We already had Adam. Now we're getting the White Devil. Like, like what is that? Who is that? It's definitely somebody from the future, I feel like, or at least a character that we do know. I'm wondering who this white devil is. A white devil. Can't really put my finger on it because there's really no... Um, explanation for that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go on a Google search just for a bit. Hmm. There's nothing really that is showing up. I thought it could be a reference to something from the bible but it doesn't feel that way the only thing that comes up is a play by john webster so i'm not really seeing anything of use for me or there's no information that i can use it's it's very different from like the case with ariadne where that is a um where that is a myth that can easily be paralleled with the story of Dark, but I, I'm not really seeing anything for the White Devil. Um, nope, none at all. So I'm just going to assume that the White Devil may refer to a character or somebody who appears to be a devil, but is white? <laughs> that's, that's, that's too literal. Um... But no one can change it, no one. Not even the white devil. Yeah. Yeah. No idea. Obviously it cannot be Adam, and therefore it cannot be Jonas or the stranger. Obviously it cannot be Noah. So who is the white devil? Who is he referring to? I 
Unless it's actually Ulrich, but I'm not getting that connection just yet. I'm not sure. This is a mystery. This is an actual mystery that we have no... any foundational ideas that we can use to theorize just yet. So... Let's just wait it out. <laughs> it's very different from like the, the stuff with like Jonas and Adam because like there's so there's a lot of imagery that can um, enforce that idea, like the t you know like like God creating Adam for example and, and and stuff. That's there. I can't see anything for it for this. So we'll keep this in, in in the back for now because we have no idea what what the White Devil entails. But it is interesting and fascinating. Another mystery to the <laughs> to the ever growing list of of questions in this show um but yeah moving forward we see Jonas sneaking in gets caught a journey to okay Charlotte let's talk about Charlotte and before that we go back just a scene before Jonas sneaks into the nuclear factory. We cut to Elizabeth, Charlotte's daughter. We focus on her and then we cut to her mother, Charlotte, holding or at least having Tan House's book. She asks to Peter who is the identity of her parents. That is a question that we have never heard before, or at least this is information that was deemed unnecessary in throughout the season of Dark because, again, it's never brought up. Now it is. Now it is important. She brought it up. And then we immediately cut to the, fut to the future again with Jonas about to be hanged by Elizabeth's daughter, sorry, by Charlotte's daughter, um, Elizabeth. But I, I kind of mixed that in because the theory is, so what if Charlotte is Elizabeth's daughter? Is it possible? Is it possible? This is the most blatant chicken and the egg amalgamation that the show could possibly think of. And because of that, I think it is possible. And the reason why I think it is possible is because if we tie this back to the very beginning, well, not really the very beginning, but like, the, but like season one, when Elizabeth meets Noah, right? Noah feels, seems very calm about her, right? Noah doesn't really, you know, hurt her in any way, shape, or form. In fact, Noah gave her an item, a clock, or, or, or a watch, or something, right? And Noah, to Noah tells her that, give this to your mother, you know, like, we're close friends or whatever, like, I know her. And Charlotte doesn't know Noah. We don't know that they have a connection. Noah just says, hey, I know your mother. So how does Noah know Charlotte? Unless he knows her from the future. So now the question is, who is the father? Unless Noah is the father? No, no, that makes no sense. <laughs> That, actually, that makes no sense. I was about to say, I was about to make that comment of like maybe, maybe Noah is the father. I mean, it is a possibility. <laughs> it, it is a possibility. Um, it's just that we haven't really seen this relationship at all, especially with Elizabeth. Like, I look at Elizabeth, I see a, a, a character who obviously is not looking for any relationships at all. <laughs> but I think putting Noah aside for for, for the time being, I think it's. A nice idea or a nice theory to be had that Charlotte is Elizabeth's daughter and then Elizabeth is Charlotte's daughter. Again, the most 
perfect example of what came first, the chicken or the egg, what came first, Charlotte or Elizabeth. Um, and the reason that we are being kept that idea a secret, the, the fact that Tan House isn't telling her about all of this is because, like, well, well duh, like, if you told her that, then chaos ensues. You don't tell your, your you know, like your granddaughter, your adoptive granddaughter or whatever that, yeah, um, your daughter is going to be your mother. So, mm -hmm. now the, the question is, how does Tanhouse know, right? So, the only other explanation that I can think think of, and I talked about this during the credits, um, when, when the credits roll, is that there's a possibility that Charlotte or at least Elizabeth traveled back in time Possibly during the apocalypse, possibly during like the five days that that is leading up to this apocalypse, Charlotte could actually, or sorry, I'm not Charlotte, Elizabeth could actually walk into the dark matter orb and then travel back in time and then settle down, I suppose, and, and, and meet someone, a father. What if it's Jonas? At this point, I have no idea. At this point, I'm just running. I'm, I'm just running out of ideas and just throwing darts at like, what if it's yours? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that, that actually makes no sense. No, 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 no. That's 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 dumb. That's dumb. No, um, the identity of the father remains a mystery for me. Um, but I'm gonna run with my theory that Elizabeth is Charlotte's daughter. Sorry. Well, yeah, it, she, she is Charlotte's daughter, but she's also her mother. And yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> I'm going to stick with that. The identity of the father remains to be a mystery because we have no further inkling. The only, um, I guess, close relationship that we do know, that we do have information, is Noah. But we just don't know what Noah's um, exact relation is when it comes to... Charlotte and Elizabeth, but we do know that they that, that he knows them, right? So let's just put a pin on that. But yeah, running theory for now. <laughs> um, but after this scene, yeah, I did mention that the the fact that, oops, sorry. Um, but yeah, um, I did mention that this scene is where. Jonas got that scar on his neck because I saw that in the beginning of the first episode of season two, which I don't think we've ever seen that scar before in previous seasons, or at least it's there, but I just never really noticed it. But it's only after the previous episode where we got a, like we got like a clear visual of that scar, and now we know how he got that scar. This part is awesome. Egon meeting with um with Ulrich. Great casting as well. This is awesome. But the fact that Egon knows, sorry, um Ulrich knows that Egon will be dead in like soon. We don't know when, but he knows it's it will be soon. It is unfortunate because i feel like egon will get to the bottom of this like he will understand or or he will learn the mystery he will get the answers and then he will die with the answers like that's i feel like that could be the case and that's what we are setting up and it will be tragic and it will be sad because egon i mean he's done a lot of things that are obviously ruining lives well more specifically ruining Ulrich's life but it's not like Egon knows any better you know what I mean like it's not like he understands the situation no he's just doing his job he's just a policeman he's just an officer who sees a f crazy person who tried to kill a child mind you so yeah it's <sighs> It's not his fault, is, is what I'm trying to say. And I like Egon as a character. I think Egon is... I think Egon is great, especially in his older years. His younger years, still young, doesn't know better, right? But older Egon, you know, he 
has wisened up and especially right now when he is trying to find that answer like i want him to get the answer and that's the thing i want all of our characters that we know to find the answers to figure out what the f is going on the problem is some of those characters may actually die right these are answers that are far too um that are far too big for these characters to comprehend and sometimes these characters aren't meant to get the answers so i do wish that egon will survive but the fact that e the fact that ulrich um, or is already mentioning the fact that his death is in the news and all over the place then yeah um, it's inevitable right it could actually be during the apocalypse as well. It could actually be like five days from now, Egon will be dead. Like he is going to find the answers and then he's going to die. And that's going to be fucking frustrating. Unless he relays this information somewhere and we're going to continue on from then. It is unfortunate that, it is unfortunate that obviously he will not put anything new in his diary, in his book. Because otherwise, that information would have already been used by Ulrich himself. So, he's not going to put anything in the book. So, he has to do something before his death. Man, that sucks too. To think about. Because I really do love his character. But moving on from, from this scene... After this little talk, we got this really sweet scene between Mikkel and, and Ines talking about like their faith, about God. Really, really fun. Well, it's not really fun. It's a very emotional moment, especially here with the, with the montage. Once again, dark with the incredible montages. This montage just screams, the truth is right there, the answer is right there, but we cannot reach it because there's a barrier, right? There's a clear and obvious barrier that we cannot reach to get the answer. The answer is like right there. For Hana, it's right there, it's right in front of her. For Ulrich as well, like it's right in front of, it's, it's, it's like out out there but obviously Ulrich cannot escape he cannot move he cannot go outside duh right especially here with charlotte like looking at the um the photo who took this photo by the way it could be a timed photo like they could just set a timer and then the photo is gonna Captured the moment, but who's actually taking this photo? Hmm. Maybe it's not really important, but the fact that it is in, in my mind now, I feel like we're gonna get a moment or a scene sometime in the future where they're gonna be in this exact position and we're gonna see them taking this photo. Beautiful moment of them hugging together. We already talked about this. And then here, at the end of the episode, Jonas walks into into the uh into the blob. To where? We don't know. You know what else we don't know? This girl. We have no idea who this girl is. Like, who is she? Who is she? Because she's very young. She's very young and obviously that means she was born after the apocalypse or, or yeah, after the apocalypse happened because otherwise she would be older. He, she would have been as old as Elizabeth. Like think about it. Elizabeth, who is very young in 2019, or well, I guess it's 2020 now, and she looks she she looks kind of rough in the future. So the fact that she is very young means that yeah, I don't know, I don't know. 
my initial guess is that she is the daughter of a character or characters that we know of from 2019, but we just don't know who she is. Could it be Magnus's son? Sorry, daughter. Hmm. I don't know. It could just be a random person or a random character that, you know, their parentage is unnecessary or, or, or unimportant, but... Given the nature of the show, everything is important, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And that's pretty much it for my discussion for Dark. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction and this discussion. It's been fun. It's been fun. See you guys next time for the next episode of Dark. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace.